Hi, and welcome to lecture 14 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we have two goals. Our goals are to, first goal is to finish section 2.3, where we're gonna look at some more of the properties of invertible matrices. In particular, what we're gonna be interested in is how invertible matrices appear when we look at linear transformations. The second thing that we wanna do for today is do a quick overview of section 2.4, where we're gonna learn about partitions of matrices. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is look at some further properties of invertible matrices. So what I've written right here is part of the classification theorem that we wrote in last lecture. So this theorem here tells us a number of equivalent conditions for a matrix to be an invertible. And I've only written a subset of them. So I've only, and these letters here correspond to all the complete list of equivalent classifications that you'll find in the in the textbook. So we have that if you have a square matrix, the following are equivalent. A is invertible. A is row equivalent to the identity. A times x equals zero has only the trivial solution. The linear transformation given by the matrix is both one to one and onto. And the last property that we have is that these are invertible. So just let me make this clear. This is just a subset uh, from the previous lecture. So a subset from the previous lecture. And I just wanted to put these parts of the classification theorem up because we're gonna be using them in our the rest of our discussion of invertible matrices in today's lecture. But before we do that, what I want to do is kind of look at a particular question that you might encounter when you're doing your homework or working on quizzes or tests. So here we have k, and k is an unknown number. And the question asks, for what k is this matrix below going to be invertible? Oops, and let me just make a correction here because I noticed that there's a typo. There should have been a k right here. So I'll put a k right there. So for what values of k will this matrix be invertible? So you can imagine there's an infinite number of choices for this k. So we want to figure out, do some of them make them invertible? or do all of them make them invertible? Uh, that's the type of question that we would like to answer. So how should one tackle this problem? Well, what you can do is just try to use the procedure to find the inverse. And as you're going along, you'll see if there's any restrictions on K. Okay. So let me make this clear. Let's, let's actually do this. So if you were to use the procedure, the procedure says, take your matrix, and put beside it the identity matrix of the appropriate size. So in our case, it's an I3, a three by three identity matrix. And what we're gonna do is just simply row reduce this matrix and see if we can put it into row reduced echelon form. So our first step, right, is we're gonna make this uh, one. So we're multiplying through by one over K. So we get one, zero, zero, one over K, zero, zero. Then I have one K, zero. 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 1, k, and I haven't touched the bottom two, the next two rows. Now, what is this equivalent to? Oh, let's see if I can squeeze it in still on this page before I go to the next slide. So I can now take this one and kill the things below it, right? So I would have 1, 0, 0, 1 over k, 0, 0, 0. Here I would have 0, k, 0, negative one over K. Um, oh, I have too many zeros there. There we go. One, zero. And I already have a zero here, so I don't need to do anything. So I have zero, one, K, zero, zero, one. Now the next stage of my Gaussian elimination says, well, we should make this a one. So we have one, zero, zero, one over K, zero, 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 one, zero, negative one over k squared, one over k, zero, and then zero, one, k, zero, zero, one. And I'll go on to the next page in a second, but now we can use this row to kill this one right here. So let's go a little squiggle here, and we'll go to the next page, and we'll go to the top, and continue our discussion here. So our next stage here, Oh, it's a little hard for you guys to see, so let me just quickly go back. 
So we're going to take this row and we're going to multiply it by minus one and add it to the bottom row. And when you do that, you will get one, zero, zero, one over K, zero, 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 one, zero, negative one over K squared, one over K, zero, 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 K, one over K squared, negative one over K, and one, and we're almost there. We almost have this into row reduced echelon form. We have to change this K into a one. So we multiply through by one over K and we end up with one, zero, 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 one, zero. So we end up with on the left-hand side with the identity matrix. And on the right-hand side, we end up with one over K, zero, zero, negative one over K squared, one over K, zero, and then one over k cubed, negative one over k squared, and one over k. So now this should be the inverse of the original matrix. And looking at this expression right here, let me make this a little clearer. There is a one at the top here. It's just not very clear. Uh, when we look at the right hand side, we ask, well, are there any k's that we can't put inside of here? And there are some k's that we can't put in inside here. If we had k is equal to zero, then we're trying to divide by zero and we get a, an answer that's not defined. But for any other k, it's fine. We can plug in any other k and get legitimate numbers on this side. So we have that the matrix is invertible if and only if k does not equal to zero. Now you may have problems that are of a similar shape or type where they give you a matrix with some of the um, entries being some sort of variable. And this is one procedure in, in order to figure out which values are allowed to be invertible. Just put it into the procedure and then look at cases that are not allowed at the end. Okay. Now, this type of matrix over here actually has a very special form. You notice that in the top right hand corner, we have a clump of zeros. And what we actually have is a notion of a triangular matrix. Okay, and we want to kind of capture that. So an n by n matrix is called upper triangular. If all the non-zero entries are, are on, I forgot the word there, let me put that in. This is are on or above the diagonal, and it's lower triangle if all the non-zero entries are on or below the diagonal. So let me just give you two quick examples here of this. So here is my, let's do this in red. We have this matrix right here, one, two, three, zero, four, five, zero, zero, six. This matrix here is upper triangular because all the non-zero entries are on the diagonal or and above and for the lower triangular triangular you can have one zero zero two zero zero six zero eight so this would be something that is an example of lower triangular that's because if you're a non-zero entry you're either on the diagonal or to the bottom of the diagonal. And so if we go back and look at my example problem, what I have here is a lower triangular matrix. So regardless of what the value of K is, all the non-zero entries are either on the diagonal or below the diagonal. So this would be an example of a lower triangular matrix. So I'm gonna put up a fact about triangular matrices over on this page. And I want you to think about it before I explain why it's true. And the fact is that triangular matrices are invertible if and only if the diagonal entries are non-zero. So the invertibility is controlled by what entries are on the diagonal if your matrix is invertible. So think about why that may be true, and I'll explain on the next part of the video.